We are back and better than ever. If you watched our lives last week, then you know we were both sick, so we weren't able to film our August wrap up. Normally, we try and get our wrap ups out as soon as each month ends, but we weren't able to do that. Last month, we set a huge reading goal for the both of us. We wanted to read 10 books each. And when I tell you we were so close to reaching that goal, I think we were each only about one book off. We did read some amazing books, so we're so excited to tell you about them today. It's gonna be a long one, so we're just gonna go ahead and get started. This month, I started with Throne of Glass. Can I just say, I understand now. I understand the hype. You guys know we really like Akatar, and when we were reading that, everyone was saying, you guys have to read Throne of Glass because it's so much better. And I honestly could see the potential. Ooh. Everyone and their mom has read this series, and for good reason, but if you didn't, now we're following a young assassin basically she's given this opportunity to earn her freedom if she becomes the king's champion she's thrown into a bunch of trials and challenges in order to win i just thought it was very entertaining i really like the introduction of this world and though i did like this book i ended up reading the second one crown of midnight this one was so, so good. I think a pattern already with Sarah J Mass is that her first books are great as an introduction, but the second books are where everything happens and where everything picks up. This one was so amazing. I honestly am normally good at predicting what's gonna happen, and this like caught me off guard a couple different times. Such a good story. I can't wait for you to start it. I gave this a 4.75. Yes, I loved it. I'm so excited to continue the series. Please go read it if you haven't already. Everyone has. <laughs> Why you look right over at me? <laughs> I finally read Before We Were Strangers by Renee Carlino. When I tell you I was not prepared for the amount of emotions that I was going to feel throughout this book, I wasn't ready. <laughs> going into this, I knew that this book is a second chance romance. I normally just do not like second chance romance books, but this one just hit differently. Their relationship was truly right person, wrong time. So reading that was so heartbreaking. The writing was so good. I started feeling like when things were happening in this book, I was there. I was really crying as if the things that were being said were being said to me. I mean, that's how you know a book is good, when you can really deeply feel that. The quotes in this book were so good. I should have tapped it. I really should have tapped it. I rated this one a 4.5 stars. I was going to give this book five stars until something towards the end happened and I really did not like that the author decided to go that route. I just think there could have been a better ending than that. That sucks. I know because it made me not like the, one of the characters as much as I did before. I guess that's life, you know? <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> it was still a really good book. If you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend. You guys know I was reading the Mortal Instruments series and this month I read City of Glass, which is book three. I will say I was talking some smack about the first two because though I did like it, I felt like book one and two were very similar and nothing happened really at the end of the day. This one, however, I feel like was its redemption. Throughout the first two books, we were waiting for this final battle to take place. And though it did happen in this one, I was a little disappointed because I wanted to see more of it, of the battle itself and of the action. I know a lot of you guys have let me know that the original trilogy was supposed to be read on its own and then I need to read the Infernal Devices trilogy before I continue with this series. So that is what I plan to do. I honestly really did like this story. Though I found a few of the things predictable, it was still so good because of the characters. I did end up giving this book a four. I am looking forward to reading more of Cassandra Clare's writing and I can finally understand what people are talking about when they reference this series. We both read The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood in our swapping screen time for read time video. We both loved it so much. We were a little worried going into it just because it is so hyped and we tend to not love really hyped books. We read a lot of contemporary romance books as you guys know and I will say this is probably my favorite one of the year. Definitely exceeded my expectations. I did not expect to like it at all and it was so good. I also love when romance books have a good amount of comedy in it and I felt like this book truly had a lot of funny moments. We're definitely excited to read the next one that just came out, Love on the Brain. But we've been hearing a lot of mixed things about I know. that one so I don't know. I'm kind of worried now. I know, me too. I've heard people say it's very much Olive and Adam. Yeah, like it's the same people but yeah. just slightly different. But here's my thing. I loved Olive's friends mm -hmm. in this book and they each had their own relationship so I feel like she should have made a book of like each of their relationships. Yeah, each of their relationships. I think it would have been so cute. We already know them and their vibe. They were funny too. I agree. Come 
Come on, Allie. Come on, Allie. <laughs> we'll have to read it and tell y'all what we think. This one was really good. We both gave it 4.5 stars. Mm -hmm. This next book is another one I read in a vlog this month, but it was The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. So good. This was a mystery story basically about a wife trying to find her husband and uncover the truth about his disappearance. You guys know when it comes to mystery thrillers, they never impress me. I don't know if it's just my choices or if I just don't like the genre, but this one was such a pleasant surprise. It was less thriller, basically just a mystery story, but it was such a well-rounded one. The mystery itself was interesting. I loved how short the chapters were, and even though this did jump back and forth from past to present, you could tell that the present story was the main focus, and that's normally my issue with books that do that. There's too much of the past and I don't really care about that. I want to know what's happening right now in today's timeline. Anytime there was a chapter about the past, it was all relevant to what was happening right now. This is also getting a adaptation soon and I can't wait to see it. This is another one I gave four stars and I do recommend it if you're looking for a short good mystery novel. During our reading sprint, I did read Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. This book started off so strong. Right away, we know what happened. These two Two dads are just trying to get revenge from their murdered sons. This was a book of the year finalist for book of the month so I did go into it with really high expectations. That being said I don't think it really matched my expectations. I thought this was going to be like a four or five star read for me. It ended up just being a 3.5. I did really like the plot and the lessons that the fathers learned. It was a very intense read. I am happy I read this one. I did shed a few tears at the very end. I think this one would make a really good movie just seeing it all play out. It probably is becoming one since everything else yeah, is becoming true. one. A nice solid read. 3.5. I'm getting Ozark. I got Ozark from yours. Oh, which one? The last thing he told me. Oh, I feel like mine wasn't very action -y Did though. you watch Ozark? No. <laughs> It was too intense. <laughs> this next book, I was not expecting to love it the way that I did. It is Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. I had never even heard of this. When we got it in one of our halls, a lot of you guys were saying, this is a classic book. You read it years ago and it was absolutely amazing. This is not one you normally see on Bookstagram, Book Talk, things like that. But I had seen a couple great reviews, I think on YouTube. And from then on out, I was very intrigued. When I saw it, I knew I had to get it. And this was, extraordinary. <laughs> The writing in this was done so well. I mean a genius. We're following a man named Charlie who has a unusually low IQ. He qualifies for this experimental operation to raise your intelligence and the operation has been successful on this lab mouse named Algernon. The whole book is Charlie's journal entries or progress reports throughout the results of the operation. So you're seeing him gain this intelligence through the writing. If you even look at the beginning, I had a hard time reading it because everything's spelled wrong. There's no punctuation. Slowly seeing the progress within him throughout the writing was so good. I don't know how to explain it. That is so cool. Right? Overall, it was so well executed, thought-provoking, emotional, such a powerful story. Highly recommend if you're looking for something a little bit different. You will not be disappointed. It was such a nice break, too, from like all the stuff we normally read. And I believe there's two different movie adaptations made. Because this there? was made back in the 50s, I believe. But the book, I'm sure, is better. Yeah. I gave it a 4.5. So good. And I have three little tabs. I did finish the Folk of the Air series. I read The Queen of Nothing. It was average. I really only finished the series because I had already bought it. My mistake. <laughs> I need to learn. I need to learn to not do that. Mm -hmm. I need to see if I like the first one before I go and buy the whole series. I think I gave this whole series three stars. It just didn't live up to the hype for me. Everything just felt really easy and convenient. It was really unbelievable at points, which I think brought me out of the story. I will say though, I did enjoy the epilogue and the overall ending. I'm happy I read it. I'm happy to be done with it. I'm happy I know my place with it. And that's all you could really hope for. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> you guys know because I talk about it every month, but I'm currently reading the Zodiac Academy series by Caroline Peckham and Suzanne Valianti. I'm loving it. Check your trigger warnings, but I did say at the beginning of the month I was going to read book six, which is the next one I have in the series. However, I did read one of the books, but it wasn't that one. Book one, The Awakening, actually has a companion novel, which is The Awakening 
Awakening but told in the boys perspective. That's the one I ended up reading. What I ended up doing was rereading book one with this one so I could see both sides of all the conversations and I really enjoyed doing it that way. However, I will say if you're gonna read this book, do not do it until you're at least past book five in the series because there's so many spoilers and foreshadowing and just things you're not supposed to know yet. Don't read it along with book one if it's the first one you're reading. There was a little bit of new information but for the most part it's the same book. <laughs> Since I already knew the story, I think I only gave this like a three or three and a half. I didn't even rate this one because it was so small. I did read It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This was my first ever Tessa Bailey book and I really enjoyed it. I loved the show Schitt's Creek. Going into this, I knew it was Schitt's Creek inspired. I knew Piper was supposed to be Alexis Rose. This was just really such a cute read. It's small town romance, opposites attract kind of romance. The girl is very Hollywood, social media star, and the boy is completely small town. He's a fisherman. I loved the banter between Piper and Brendan. I'm really excited to read Hannah's story next. Another great romance author. I'm excited to read yeah. more of her books. And I see her books all the time so I'm glad you like her. In July I started the Madison Kate series by Tate James and I read book one. Absolutely loved it. It's a dark contemporary romance. Book one basically just followed this girl who went down for a crime she didn't commit and three mysterious secretive boys entered her life. I read book two in August and this is Liar. In book two we get to know a lot more about each of the guys she knows they're hiding something from her but she's still forming these connections with them mk has a past of her own and her father is very well known so she has a stalker and in this book things get a lot more dangerous i felt like that added to the pacing of the book and a little bit of a thriller mystery aspect this series is just so entertaining every dark romance book that i've read i found that they're so addicting and really easy to binge it's such a good dark reverse harem book i look forward to continuing the series thank you nikki for the recommendation as always. I did read Namesake by Adrienne Young which is book two in the Fable duology. So good. I'm definitely excited to read the spinoff The Last Legacy. I already own it. I need to read it already and then I'm gonna want to read Saint which is a prequel. I think it comes out in a few months. We definitely recommend this duology if you are looking for a YA fantasy with lots of adventure. In August we did have a video where we bought books for each other and swapped them and read them. There's a whole vlog if you haven't seen it already. Mine was The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. Mine was <laughs> Too Late by Miss Colleen Hoover. In the vlog, we have all of our thoughts and reactions, so if you're really interested, make sure to check out that. But overall, I did really like this one. It was my first Lauren Asher book. It's a grumpy sunshine workplace billionaire romance. I did enjoy the characters. I don't know if I would read the next one, Terms and Conditions, anytime soon. I still haven't read the next one. Yeah. I do love the premise of the book, though. I think I give it like a 3.25. I love Colleen. I love everything she writes, so no surprise. I loved this one, too. It was my first ever dark romance, and I did did really love that aspect of it. I'm pretty sure I gave it four stars. Colleen writes romance and thriller so well, so this was just a perfect combination of both. I definitely recommend, but please check your trigger warnings and do not read the second epilogue. It's not worth it. My last book was Turtles All the Way Down. This was my first ever John Green book. It's a big deal. Yeah, he writes a lot. It's of about time. Stuff. Yeah, it is about time. It was a really cute YA story. It deals with mental health, and there's also some mystery thrown in there. I know the movie is coming out. I think next year Marcus from Jenny and Georgia is going to be playing at Davis so I'm really excited to see that. I think it will be a really good adaptation. I mean what John Green book has it become a good adaptation? Paper Towns. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. You didn't like Paper Towns? The book was better. We were so close to the 10 books I each. know. I honestly felt like we could have done it too. Oh, definitely. There was one week where I just didn't read at all. <laughs> so many great ones though. This has been the best reading month that I've had. You don't ever give four stars. So I know. The fact that you have four, 4.5, 4.75. It's never going to happen again, guys. <laughs> oh, no. Don't say that. I think you're just learning what you like. Right. I'm happy with my month because now I know I love Tessa mm -hmm. Bailey. I love Allie Hazelwood. Those are two new romance authors that I can go and buy all of their Books. Since fall has already started, we do want to put out a fall TBR recommendation video. We're hoping to do that later this week. It's just time to get into spooky season. Mm -hmm. I'm so ready. This is the best time of year. It's going to have the best books, the best vibes. We're already in long sleeves, but We're, it's so hot. I'm sweating, <laughs> but here we are. That is going to wrap up today's wrap up. As always, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. All of our social medias are in the description, and we will see you next time. Oh, and we're back at it. <laughs> I really wasn't expecting this book to be so action packed, you know, with like <laughs> action. <laughs> this next book was such a curveball, in my opinion. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what just 
A curveball! Okay. Oh, you know why? Because you're expecting a straight <laughs> ball, but it curves. It's... Dude, whatever. Alright. Yeah. Dangerous. Oh, is that what that says? Yeah. Oh, it's all that? cracking off, too. It's really old. 